I'm Connie Harper, and I'm the parish nurse at the Wayne Fleet Be in Christ Church. For the Lenten reading today, I'm reading from Mark chapter 15, verses 1 to 15. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of? But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. It is not easy to be treated unfairly and take it graciously. The arrest of Jesus reeked of injustice at every turn. People often think Christ's version of humanity sheltered him from conflicting emotions and the resultant suffering. We imagine he felt no anger at the Sanhedrin that gathered illegally and condemned him unjustly. It is easier to think he was above all that and absorbed such betrayal and remained unaffected. It is very possible the opposite is true. If Jesus was in all ways tempted as we are, as Hebrews 4.15 states, the encounter with Pilate required focus and discipline. His sharpened appreciation for injustice and the selfish dynamics driving it required a greater degree of grace. In the face of that abuse, he stood before mere peons with overinflated estimates of their own self-importance and did nothing. But that hardly means he felt nothing. Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, he said earlier. The kind of death he was to die was not the only indignity filling his cup. I am encouraged to know Jesus felt what I might be feeling without doing what I would be tempted to do. He battled dragons that day without becoming one, even though he had the power to call 10,000 angels to his defense. We learn very early that life is not fair. Handling in inequities with grace and dig dignity is one of the greater challenges of our existence. Some disparities have to do with the, with the hand we are dealt, things based on the social determinants of health and the random distribution of benefits and privilege, and others with the events that test our resilience. Jesus likely knew that emotions are not chosen, they are what they are. He could be tempted in every way as we are because feelings say nothing about our character. Actions are chosen, responses are chosen, virtue, integrity, and character are chosen. Jesus said nothing because nothing he could say would alter his course. It did not matter how he felt. His singular focus was on authentically and compassionately fulfilling his calling. We all face challenges every day, some of which disturb our peace and ampl amplify the deficits we experience. Jesus stood firm in his conviction and rested in the embrace of his Father. 
Life is not fair, but we can be. Whatever feelings we are processing, we can respond with grace and integrity. We may not feel much joy in the moment, but we can be certain that our Maker does. Let's close in prayer. Thank you, Lord, that we are entrusted with this ministry of good news. In times when hearts are weakened and spirits low, help us to bring your joy that is our strength. May we be conduits of your grace and beacons of Christ's hope to bring the same comfort to others with which we are comforted. For we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Now we have a couple of um, meditation or reflections to um, think about. Take some time to reflect on the following questions. Read the scripture again between each question. What words in the passage caught your attention? What in this passage brought you comfort? What in this passage challenged you? And now um, following this, we'll have a couple more, a few more questions that can be discussed, um, which we'll be following. Thank you.